الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اخذنا ولله الحمد والمنة في الدرس الماضي ما تعلق بالاصل الثاني من الاصول الثلاثه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا وسلم وبعد. We talk in the previous lessons that which relates to the second principle from the three principles. And just before the Sheikh begins, there's a reminder to the brothers that when the Sheikh asks a question, if you answer it, please. So don't shout out, just pray. فنسأل أولاً عما أخذنا بالدرس الماضي ثم نبدأ إكمال ما بدأنا فيه من الإيمان. So first we're going to ask about those things which we covered last lesson and then we'll complete what we studied in terms of إيمان back and stuff which comes after. ما هو الأصل الثاني من الأصول الثلاثة؟ What is the second principle from the three principles? نعم. ما دين كويجو ليجو. نعم. بيان دين الإسلام. So the second principle is an explanation of the religion of Islam along with its evidences. ما هو الإسلام? What is الإسلام? ما هو الإسلام? What is الإسلام? بقية ما أعرف الإسلام. The rest of you don't know the meaning of Islam. نعم. إسلام. الإسلام هو الإسلام. الاستسلام لله للتوحيد والانقياد له بالطاعة والبراءة من الشرك وعلى فتح الله عليه So, الإسلام, as the brother mentioned, may Allah bless him, is three things الاستسلام لله بالتوحيد To submit yourself to Allah in Tawheed By singing out your worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And الانقياد له بالطاعة Submitting yourself or directing yourself towards Allah in obedience to him and then finding the third matter was Baraatu min al-shirki wa ahlihi Disassociating yourself and freeing yourself from al-shirk and the people of shirk So, al-istislam lillah bin tawheed Idha ankar naw min anwa' al-tawheed al-thalad Hal hadha muslim? So, the first part of this definition Al-istislam lillah bin tawheed Submitting yourself to Allah with tawheed If somebody was to reject one of the three types of Tawheed, would this must be a Muslim? No. No. Al-Qiyad al Submitting yourself or directing yourself or complying to Allah in terms of obedience. فعلى ما ذكر الشيخ محمد بن عبد الله رحمه الله تعالى في نواقض الإسلام الإعراض عن دين الله بالكلي لا يتعلم ولا يعمل هذا أتى بناقض من نواقض الإسلام أي كافر ليس مسلم. So regarding this, what I just mentioned, like Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab mentioned in his other book, Nawaqid al-Islam, those matters which invalidate your Islam or your religion. If a person turns away from the religion completely, doesn't learn anything about it, doesn't act by it, nothing, just turns away completely, this person isn't Muslim. Why? Because he has done something which invalidates a person's Islam, totally turned away from the religion. No learning, no actions, nothing at all. ما هي مراتب الدين؟ Okay, what are the different levels of the religion؟ نعم. كم أولا؟ How many first? Three. ثلاثة. مراتب الدين ثلاثة. واحد. الأول إسلام. الإسلام. Firstly, the Islam. والثاني الإيمان. الإيمان. Secondly, the Iman. والثالث الإحسان. الإحسان. فتح الله. Thirdly, the Iman. نعم. أركان الإسلام كم؟ How many are the pillars of Islam? The pillars of Islam. أركان الإسلام. The pillars of Islam. خمسة. خمسة. Five. وهي. And they are. الشهادتين. الشهادتان. The two testimonies of faith. شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وشهادة أن محمد عبد رسول. The testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship in truth except Allah. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the slave and the messenger of Allah, number one. Thani, Second, 
من إقامة الصلاة ولا بد في إقامة الصلاة على الرجال البالغين أن تصلى بالجماعة. نعم. The second prayer is establishing the prayer. I establishing the five daily obligatory prayers, and for the men who have reached the age of puberty, to establish them in congregation in the mosques. نعم. إيتاء الزكاة. Thirdly, giving a zakah. و. صوم رمضان. Fasting the month of Ramadan. حج بيت الله الحرام من السطاع إلى السبيل. And finally, make a pilgrimage to the house of Allah if you are able to do so. ما معنى شهادة لا إله إلا الله؟ What's the meaning of شهادة لا إله إلا الله؟ بقي ما علم. The rest of you don't know. محمد بن عبد الوهاب يقول رحمه الله. محمد بن عبد الوهاب يا الله مرسي بني مي said. فقبح الله من أبو جهل أعلم منه بأصل الإسلام. That may Allah make a person, or may Allah just down upon a person who Abu Jahl is more knowledgeable than him about Islam. Abu Jahl, he knows the meaning of La ilaha illallah, or not? He knows or not? Abu Jahl, did he know the meaning of La ilaha illallah? He knows. Subhanallah. And there are some Muslims who do not know the meaning of La ilaha illallah. Abu Jahl, he knows the meaning of La ilaha illallah, and yet some of the Muslims don't know the meaning of La ilaha illallah. كيف يكون أبو جهل يعرف معنى لا إله إلا الله وأنا أصل كفر وأنت مسلم لا تعرف لا إله إلا الله. How is it possible that Abu Jahl he knows the meaning of لا إله إلا الله and he's from the heads of disbelief and yet you as a Muslim you don't know the meaning of لا إله إلا الله. ويأتيك بعض الناس يقول لا تتعلم ولا تدرس. And some people they come to you and they say don't learn, don't study, you don't need to study. ولا تعلم الناس التوحيد ولا تتعلم التوحيد. And don't even bother teaching people توحيد and don't learn توحيد yourself. وإذا ذكر الله وحده ثم أزت قلوب الذين لا يؤمنون بالآخرة وإذا ذكر الذين من دونه إذا هم يستبشرون إذا كنت لا تفرح إذا ذكر التوحيد تعالى ما كان عليها الكفر. So like Allah said in the Quran that some people when Allah is mentioned alone then their hearts begin to feel a type of restriction and yet when other than Allah is mentioned then they become happy. Then they become delighted, delightful. So if you don't become happy when Tawheed is being mentioned, then you're from those people. ما معنى لا إله إلا الله? What's the meaning of لا إله إلا الله? معنى لا إله إلا الله. نعم. لا معبود بحق إلا الله. There is no deity worthy of worship in truth except Allah. لماذا نقول في معنى لا إله إلا الله لا معبود بحق إلا الله ولا نقول مثلا لا معبود إلا الله ما الفرق هل هناك فرق بين قول أي في معنى لا إله إلا الله لا معبود بحق ولا معبود إلا الله أو ليس هناك فرق؟ So according to the definition that the brother gave, he said that there is no deity worthy of worship in truth be حق except Allah. Is there a difference in saying what the brother said and between saying that whatever is worshipped or there is nothing that is worshipped except Allah? Or there is no God but Allah? Is there a difference between saying these two things? What is the difference? Now, when I fell, I'm We recognize that other things are worshipped. It's not the truth. And it's not in the Bible. Now, when I fell, because when I say that I'm not a believer, this is the truth. وعندما يقول لا معبود إلا الله هذا هو الشرك والكفر. Saying yes, there is a difference. When a person says there is no deity worthy of worship in truth except Allah, this is a tawhid. But when a person says that there is nothing worshipped except Allah, or when a person says there is no God but Allah, this is a shirk in itself. لأنه ما معنى هذا أن يقول كل ما عبد فهو إله. Because what this means. وعبادة حق. Because what this means is anything which is worshipped. It's a God, or it's the truth, or it's Allah, it's the worship is true, uh, correct. Now, Rukna Shahada, the two pillars of a Shahada, the two pillars you mentioned. Now, 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 the brother mentioned, and Nafi wal Ithbat, the two pillars of Shahada, Allah, Ilaha, Illallah is negating something and affirming something and these are the two and this is the essence or the core meaning of at tawheed the reality of tawheed what is it 
الجمع بين النفي والإثبات. To combine both negation and affirmation. لا إله. لا إله. أي there is no deity worthy of worship. نافع الجمع معبد من دون الله. You're negating everything which is worshipped besides Allah. Everything. الكفر بالطاغوت. Disbelieving in the false gods and the false deities. إلا الله. Except Allah. هذا الإثبات. This is now affirmation. مثبت العباد لله حد لا شريك له. You're affirming worship for Allah alone. He has no partners. لا إله. لا إله. There is no god or deity. إن نبراء مما تعبدون. Is like saying or like Allah said, in the name, I am, I am free from that which you worship. إلا الله. Except Allah. إلا الذي فطرني. Is like the saying of Ibrahim عليه السلام. الذي خلقني. Except the one who created me. نعم. طيب هل يصح في معنى لا إله إلا الله أن نقول لا رب بحق إلا الله. Is it correct to say when we say لا إله إلا الله? Is it correct to be translated as لا رب? There is no Lord in truth except Allah. هل يصح ولا يصح? Is it correct or not correct? نعم يصح. أوقع. نعم يصح. نعم يصح. نعم. هل يخالف أحد؟ Does anybody disagree with him? ما يخالف أحد. Nobody disagrees with him. نعم. لا. لأن المشركين يعني بعض. بعض هذا الكلام في معنى لا إله إلا الله. نعم الله سبحانه وتعالى هو رب هو رب بحق لكن لا صح في معنى لا إله إلا الله لأن الكفار الذين بعث فيهم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أقروا بتوحيد الربوبية وحصلت الخصومة بينه وبين النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في توحيد. So he said that saying there is no Lord except Allah or no Creator except Allah is, is right, is correct. However, to say this is the meaning of La ilaha illallah, this isn't correct. Why? Because even the Mushrikun at the time of the Quraysh, they used to believe this. They used to accept and believe that Allah is the true Lord. But the fight or the collision that happened between the people of Tawheed and the people of Shirk was in terms of the right to, of Allah to be worshipped. Say, I do not worship that which you worship and you do not worship which I worship. Like in story for the Kafir room. Now, إِذَا لَا يَصَحْفِ تَفْسِيرِ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ أَنَّ قُلْ لَا رَبَّ بِحَقِّ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Therefore, when we're explaining the phrase لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ we can't say that it means there is no Lord except Allah. طيب. <coughs> أيضا ما معنى أخذنا شهادة أن محمد عبد رسول. Also we covered what is the meaning of شهادة أن محمد عبد هو رسول. What's the meaning of this? نعم نعم. طاعة بما أمر. Is to show obedience to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in everything which he has ordered, and it is to testify to the truthfulness of everything which he has informed. Every information that he has given us, we believe for it to be true, and avoiding or staying away, totally avoiding everything which the Prophet forbade from doing, and that. You should only worship Allah in the way which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has legislated. Ta'atu fi ma amar. Ta'atu fi ma amar. Showing obedience to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in everything which has ordered you to do so. يعني meaning لو قال قائل if a person said أنا أخذ الأحكام فقط من القرآن. I'm going to take only the rulings of the Quran. And I don't take anything from the Sunnah of the Prophet. Then this person, this person in reality, he hasn't uh, he hasn't given the testimony that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah because he hasn't obeyed him in everything which he has ordered. The second part, to steer for Fima Akbar, accepting and testifying to the truthfulness of everything which the Prophet informed of.
لو انكر شيء قال انا ما اصدق بهذا الذي اخبر عنه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مثل يعني افتراق الامه او انكم تفترون في قبوركم قال انا ما ما اصدق هذا الخبر واصدق كل الاخبار الا خبر واحد If a person came and he said, I believe that everything which the Prophet has said, every piece of information that the Prophet gave is the truth. I believe it's the truth and I testify that it's the truth. However, I don't believe in one piece of information. For example, I don't believe that the people are tested in their graves. I don't believe that the Ummah will be split into various sects. Kafir. This person is a disbeliever. Abandoning or leaving alone everything which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbade. يعني تجعل منا عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في جانب أنت في جانب آخر وهذا مبالغة في القعد عن المحرمات. So the meaning of this is that whatever the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbade, you pray over there on that side, and you put yourself on that side. So in in using this word ichinab, this is مبالغة. We're emphasizing. The extreme nature of how we should stay away from disobeying the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You're on that side, and what the Prophet forbade from is on that side. And that you do not worship Allah except in the way that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has legislated. This is a refutation upon who? Upon the innovators, the people of innovation. The two conditions of an act of worship being accepted. The two conditions. Yes, Al-Ikhlas. in sincerity. And for this reason, we study at Tawheed. So your actions can be sincere for the sake of Allah. Secondly, Yes, we in accordance to the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. وَلِهَذَا لَدْرَسَ الْفِقْهِ And for this reason, we study al-fiqh. نعم. طيب. ما معنى شهادة أن محمد العبد هو رسول؟ What is the meaning of I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the slave and the messenger of Allah. لا بد أن نجمع في وصفنا للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بين we have to, when we say this, or in explaining this, we combine two matters. What are they? So firstly, we believe that the Prophet is a slave and he isn't worshipped. Like the Sheikh said, say he is a slave and he isn't worshipped. Under the Prophet Sallallahu he's a messenger and he's not disbelieved. Either or disobeyed. Alladhi yashhad Allah ilaha illallah. Walam yashhad anna Muhammad al-Abdu Rasul. Mu'min. So the one. Muslim. The one who testifies that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah. But he doesn't testify that the Prophet Muhammad is a messenger. Can he be a Muslim? Hatta wa in ka'an ala ma ka'an alayhi al-anbiya wa rasul alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Even if a person is upon the true religion of Musa alayhi salam, upon the true religion of Musa alayhi salam, still he can't be a Muslim. Muslim? لا. طيب. نعم. لو شاهد من لا إله إلا الله وشاهد أن محمدا رسول الله دون أن يشهد أن محمدا عليه الصلاة والسلام عبد. If a person, he testifies that there is no deity worthy of worship in truth except Allah. And a person testifies that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is a messenger of Allah. But he didn't testify that Muhammad is a slave of Allah. So therefore, he directs to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa something from the meaning, meanings of al rububiyyah And he says, for example, the Prophet isn't, isn't, not, isn't a man, he's not from you from the humans. Has he really testified? No. And then after this, we took previously the definition of Iman according to Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. What is the definition of Iman according to the people of the Sunnah, Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah? We said that when you define Al-Iman, you have to mention five things. 
قولهم باللسان نمبر 1 a statement upon the tongue واعتقاد بالقلب نمبر 2 a belief in the heart وعمل القلب والجوارح نمبر 3 an action in the heart and upon the limbs يزيد بالطاعة نمبر 4 it increases your iman increases in your obedience to Allah وينقص بالمعصية and that iman decreases in disobedience to Allah قول باللسان a statement upon the tongue يقول بلسانه لكن لا يعتقد بقلبه. A person says something upon his tongue but he doesn't believe in his heart. هل هذا مؤمن أو مسلم يقول بلسانه لكن لا يعتقد بقلبه. Can such a person be a mu'min or a muslim? He says something upon his tongue yet he doesn't believe in his heart. Can he be a muslim or a mu'min? The question is, we said that Iman, faith, Iman according to Ahl Sunnah is لا لا يقول لسانه لكن لا يعتقد بقلبه هل هذا مسلم؟ If a person says something upon his tongue يقول لا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد عبد الرسول بلسانه لكن لا يعتقد بقلبه If a person says أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله upon his tongue and a person says أشهد أن محمد رسول upon his tongue but he doesn't believe in his heart can this person be a Muslim? لا ماذا نسمي؟ What would we call this person? Anything but a Muslim. But what would we call him? منافق نفاق أكبر اعتقادي. منافق هي هيبوكريت. نعم. With a major form of hypocrisy. طيب يعتقد بقلبه لكن لا يصرح بلسانه أبدا. A person he believes in his heart but he doesn't mention it or upon his tongue. يعتقد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد العبد رسول بقلب لكن لا يقول هذا بلسان أبد. A person in his heart he believes لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله but he doesn't say upon his tongue. آه. ماذا نسمي؟ What would we call this type of person? كافر كفر أكبر. This person is a kafir, the major form of kufr, disbelief. بل على هذا أمة الكفر. Rather, this is what the Imams of the Kufr were upon. نعم إذن لا بد في الإيمان من أمور خمسة قول باللسان. So therefore, when we define iman, we have to mention five things. Number one, a statement upon the tongue. قول باللسان. واعتقاد بالقلب. Secondly, a belief. Secondly, a belief in the heart. ولا بد أن يعمل. And then a person has to do actions. بماذا يكون العمل؟ How does a person do actions? بالقلب وبالجوارح. Upon one's heart and upon one's limbs. يزيد بالطاعة. And then the iman it increases according to your obedience to Allah. إذا هل الإيمان يزيد وينقص؟ So if a question is asked, can iman increase and decrease? هل الإيمان يزيد وينقص؟ نعم أم لا؟ Can iman increase and decrease? Yes or no? Yes. نعم. يزيد. ما الدليل على أن الإيمان يزيد؟ What's the evidence that iman increases? أيكم زادت هذه إيمانا؟ Like Allah said, you know who amongst you or the ones amongst you whose iman is increased, i.e., when you're reciting the ayat of Allah. وإذا كان يزيد لا بد ينقص. And therefore, if something increases, it naturally decreases as well. وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said. ما رأيت من ناقصات عقل ودين. ناقصات عقل ودين. إذا الدين ينقص. لأن تترك الصلاة في أيام الحلم فينقص الدين لنقص أو ترك الصلاة في هذه الأيام للعذر نعم So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said as an evidence that iman can increase or decrease that referring to uh, women that they are sometimes deficient in their religion and in their intellect and what is the meaning of being deficient in their religion that they leave alone the prayers when they are having the monthly uh, period bleeding. So the fact that they leave alone the prayers due to an excuse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a decrease in their religion. 
ما هي أركان الإيمان أو كم عدد أركان الإيمان هل هي خمسة أو ستة أو ثمانية How many are the colors of an iman? Five, six, or eight? No. 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 أن تؤمن بالله. They have iman in Allah. وملائكته. And his angels. وكتبه. And his books. ورسله. And his messengers. The final day. And the decree of Allah, the good of it and the bad of it. طيب. لو قال القائل. If a person said to you. هل أنت مؤمن بالله؟ Are you a مؤمن in Allah? Are you believing in Allah? What will you say? ماذا تقول؟ تقول نعم Say yes, I'm a believer. أقول أريد أن تشرح لي كيف أكون مؤمن بالله. If a person then says to you the same thing, then says to you, okay, explain to me how I can be a believer. نعم. What would you say? ماذا تقول؟ لا تعرف؟ إذا أنت لست مؤمن بالله، إذا ما تعرف كيف يكون الإيمان بالله. If you don't know, if you don't know how a person can have iman in Allah, then you can't, you're not a believer. صحيح. الإيمان بالله، الإيمان إلى الله، having إيمان إلى الله، يكون بالإيمان بتوحيد الكلوهية والربوبية والأسماء والصفات والإيمان بوجود الله. So a person has or affirms for himself إيمان إلى الله by having إيمان in four things: إيمان in ربوبية الله، أي in the actions of Allah. All the fact that Allah is the Creator, Allah is the Khaliq, the Malik, Mudabir al Am. Afraad Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi afa'ali. I singing out Allah in His actions. In His actions. That's the first thing. Secondly, by having Iman in al Uruhiya. That your worship has to be sincere for His sake. Thirdly, having Iman in the names and attributes of Allah. And fourthly, having Iman in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar ma'ana al Adilla ishmaalan ala wujudillah arba'a. And we mentioned yesterday that the evidences that prove the existence of Allah in summary or generally speaking are four. Al-Aql. Number one, the intellect. wal Number two, the materialistic or the physical evidences that we can sense. wal Number three, the fitra, the natural uh, disposition that you're born upon. wal And number four, the Islamic evidences. إذن الإيمان بالله يتضمن الإيمان بربوبية وعلوهية وأسماء وصفات والإيمان بوجود الله. So therefore, your iman in Allah it consists of four things: having iman in the rububiyah of Allah and the uluhiyah and أسماء وصفات and then the existence of Allah. ودل على وجود الله العقل والحس والفطرة والشرع. And the evidences for the existence of Allah are those four things: your intellect, your the senses. Or the physical, materialistic uh, evidences, your natural disposition, the fitra, and then the shab, the Islamic evidences, the ayat. طيب. الثاني. Secondly. الثاني أركان الإيمان. What is the second pillar of iman? الركن الثاني من أركان الإيمان. الملائكة. الإيمان بالملائكة. Having iman in the angels. لو قال لك قائل كيف أكون مؤمن بالملائكة؟ If a person said to you, how can I be a believer in the ملائكة? How can I have iman in the ملائكة? تؤمن بأنهم عالم غيب يعني غابوا عنا لا نراهم. So the first thing you have to say to this person who asks this question that they, the angels, they're a form of creation which are from the unseen. We don't know them; they're hidden from us. خلقهم الله من نور. Allah has created them from light, from nur. يطيعون الله ولا يعصون. They obey Allah and they don't disobey Him. لهم أرواح. They have souls. وأجساد. They have bodies. وعقول. They have intellects. وقلوب. And they have hearts. لهم أرواح. They have souls meaning. روح القدس. Like the Holy Spirit. أجساد. They have bodies. جعل الملائكة رسلا أولي أجنحة مثنى وثلاث وربع. Like Allah said in the Quran that He has made the or He has created the angels as messengers with wings. 
and also they have intellects and they have hearts like Allah said when he spoke about the angels until, until when the angels they begin to fear so they have intellects or feelings we believe in every single angel generally speaking and we believe in everything which Allah has taught about the angels like their names and their attributes or characteristics and their actions and the information that has come regarding them so we believe in all of the angels generally speaking <coughs> and we believe in everything which Allah has taught us about them i.e. their names their descriptions or characteristics their actions and also the information that has come regarding them. The reason why the Shaykh is sometimes repeating things over and over again is so you're memorizing. This is why he's repeating it. And then when you go back later, then you can write it down. So this is why he repeats things a few times. From the names of the angels, Jibreel, from the peace is Jibreel, and Mikael, and Israfil, and the angel of death, Malak al Mawt. This, these are the names that we believe in. The descriptions or the characteristics that we believe in. The fact that they do not disobey Allah in whatever He has ordered. And they do whichever that which Allah has ordered them. And in terms of their actions. So for example, Jibreel, his job or his action is that he's, trust, he's uh, responsible for revelation. And the angel of death, Malak al Maut, he has been responsible or his action or his job is to take the souls of the living. The third pillar of Iman. That you believe in the books. If a person said to you, are you, are you a believer in the books, are you the books of Allah? You would say yes. What if he then said, what if he said, how do I become a believer in the books that were revealed? You say to him that firstly you have to believe that the books of Allah are the words of Allah, the speech of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he spoke the words which are in the book in reality. In reality, he spoke these words. And that these books are revealed by Allah and they're not created. And that Allah has revealed a book with every single messenger. We believe in all of the books. And we believe in everything which Allah has taught us regarding those books. Their names and the information regarding those books. And also we believe and we have found the rulings that are found in those previous books as long as they haven't been abrogated or annulled by the Quran. And, and that the Quran has come to abrogate the rulings in, in, in the previous books. And the meaning of a nasif abrogation is that the Quran has come and it has done away with the previous, some of the previous rulings. And it's come out with new rulings in the place of the previous rulings. We believe in all of the books, generally speaking, in a general manner. <coughs> so again, and also in everything which Allah has taught us regarding the books, like their names. So from the names that we believe in is the Quran, the Injil, the Torah, the Zabud, and then the Suhuf of Ibrahim and Musa, the scrolls of Musa and Ibrahim. From the names, so we believe in the names, and we believe in the information in the books, and we believe in the rulings that are contained in the previous books as long as they haven't been abrogated. And that we also believe that the Quran came and it abrogated the previous books. 
بعد هذا من أركان الإيمان. After this, the next pillar of Iman. الإيمان بالرسل. الأنبياء والرسل عليهم الصلاة والسلام. So the next pillar of Iman is having Iman in the messengers and the prophets of Allah. كيف يكون الإيمان بالأنبياء والرسل عليهم الصلاة والسلام؟ If a person says, how can we have Iman in the prophets and the messenger of Allah? نؤمن بأنهم عبيد لا يعبدون. Firstly, we believe that those prophets and messengers, they themselves were slaves and they have no right to be worshipped. And that they are messengers or prophets and they are not to be disbelieved in. And that Allah, He sent them. And He revealed to them. And He supported and helped them with ayahs, with verses and signs. And we also bear witness that those prophets and messengers, they have fulfilled the trust. And that they came and they advised the Ummah. And that they conveyed the Risala, they conveyed the message. And they fought and they strived for the sake of Allah as they should have done. And that the first of the prophets, Adam, Adam, وأول الرسل نوح. and the first of the messengers is نوح عليه الصلاة والسلام. وخاتم الأنبياء والرسل محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام. and the final prophet and messenger is محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. كل من ادعى النبوة أو الرسالة بعد موت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فهو كافر كائن من كان. so whoever comes after the prophet محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and he claims prophethood. Then this person is a kadi, he's a liar. Whoever this person is, he is a liar. One more time. Al Iman bil Ambiya Rusul Alayhi Musalat was salam. Regarding Al Iman, having Iman in the Prophets and the Messengers Alayhi Musalat was salam. No min bi anna hum abid la yabdun Rusul la yakadabun. First of all, we believe that these Prophets and Messengers, they themselves are slaves and they are not to be worshipped. They have no right to be worshipped. We believe they are messengers and they are not to be disbelieved. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who sent them. And that Allah, He supported and helped them and made them victorious with signs and verses. And that they, the prophets and messengers, they fulfilled the trust. And they gave the sincere advice to the ummah. And that they conveyed the risala, they conveyed the message. And that they fought, they fought and they, they strived for the sake of Allah as they ought to have done. And that the first of the prophets is Adam. And the first of the messengers is Noah. And the last and the final of all the prophets and messengers is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We believe in them in a general manner. And we believe in everything which Allah has informed of us regarding them, i.e. their names, their descriptions and characteristics, and also the signs and the miracles that Allah gave them and, and supported them by. And also the information that came regarding those prophets. After this, the next pillar, is al Iman in the final day, al Yom al Akhir? Now, al Iman al Yom al Akhir. So Iman in the final day. يتغمن الإيمان بكل ما يكون بعد الموت. This includes having Iman or believing everything which will occur after death. ماذا يكون بعد الموت؟ So what will occur after death? كل ما يكون بعد الموت مما جاء في الكتاب والسنة هو من الإيمان باليوم الآخر. So anything which is found in the Quran and the Sunnah mentioning that which will occur after death, then all of this comes under al Iman باليوم الآخر. خروج الروح. So for example, the soul leaving the body. قبض الملائكة للروح. The angels taking and taking the souls. صعودا بها للسماء. The angels, the angels taking the souls of the people and taking them to the heavens. And that the doors of the heavens or the skies are open and closed for them. And then the fact that the angels, they come back with the souls to the bodies. And that the person in the grave, while he's in the grave, he hears the sounds of the footsteps. 
Shu'al al-Malakayn fil qabr. Also, how the two angels the question the dead person in the grave. Ala al-Rasul al-Thalaq. Regarding the three principles. Ala al-Qabr. We believe in the punishment of the grave. Na'im al-Qabr. We believe in the reward and the delight of the grave. Al-Ba'ath wa al-Nushur. And then the resurrection once again. Yawm al-Qiyam. Believe in your Qiyam, the day of resurrection. Hashr al-Nas. And then we believe in all of the people coming together. Hawad al-Nabi s.a.w. We believe in the fountain of the lake of the Prophet s.a.w. As-salat al-Mansur ala matni jahannam s.a.w. And we also have to believe in the path or the bridge over at the two sides of Jahannam, we ask Allah for safety and pardon. Al-Jannah. We believe in Al-Jannah. Al-Nah. Believe in the fire. كل ما يقوم بعد الموت هو من الإيمان باليوم الآخر. Everything which will occur after a person's death, then all of this we have to believe in, and this comes under the belief in the final day. لو أنك if a person was to disbelieve يوم القيامة أو البعث أو النشور فهو كافر. If a person was to disbelieve just in the day of resurrection. Or a person was to believe in the people being resurrected. This person is a kafir, a disbeliever. Okay, the sixth pillar from the six pillars of Al Iman. Al Iman, the Qada, Wal Qadar, Fatihah. As it is having Iman or believing in the pre-decree, Al Qada Wal Qadar. Al Iman, the Qada Wal Qadar, Yatawman Al Iman, Bimaratib Arba. So. Having Iman in Al-Qadr, it compromises of or it includes four matters. Al-Ilm, number one, knowledge. Wal-Kitaba, number two, the writing. Wal-Mashira, number three, the will. Wal-Khal, and then number four, the actual creation or the execution of their will. Al-Ilm, number one, knowledge. Wal-Kitaba, number two, writing. Wal-Mashira, number three, the will. Wal-Khal. Number four, the creation or the execution of the will. Alim wa kitab wa mashia wa khalq. These four matters. These four matters. Knowledge and writing and the will and the creation. Alim. Knowledge. And tu'min anna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alim kul shay. Is that you believe that Allah, he has knowledge of everything. Wa la yakhfa alim shay. And nothing is hidden from him. الكتابة the writing أمر الله سبحانه وتعالى سبحانه وتعالى قلم بأن يكتب مقادير كل شيء إلى أن تقوم الساعة that Allah سبحانه وتعالى he ordered the pen to write everything which will occur up until يوم القيامة إذا كل شيء مكتوب therefore everything is written المشيئة المشيئة the will the will of Allah لا يمكن أن يقع في ملك الله إلا ما أراد الله it's not possible for something to occur in the universe or the dominion of Allah except through the will of Allah and the want of Allah. Does a slave, does a creator slave, do we have a will? Yes, we have a will. Yes, we, we have a will and we have a want. However, our will and want is under and sub submissive to the will of Allah. فما شاء الله كان وما لم يشاء لم يكن. so whatever Allah wills will occur and whatever Allah wills for not to happen will never occur. الرابع الخلق. and then fourthly creation or execution of the will. فالعبد مخلوق. so the slave is created. وأعماله تابع له فهو مخلوق مثله. and and his actions follow him so therefore his actions are also created. والله خلقكم وما تعملوا. like Allah said in the Quran. That Allah created you and He created what you do are your actions. And therefore these four levels are the levels of Iman in Al-Qadr, in the pre-decree, in the decree. Al-ilm, Al-ilm, knowledge, and Allah alim kul shay. That Allah knows everything. وَأَمَرَ الْقَلَمِ بِأَنْ يَكْتُبَ مَقَادِرَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ And then the writing that Allah has ordered the pen to write everything. والمشيئة أن ما شاء الله كان وما لم يشاء لم يكن. and then مشيئة أي the will of Allah whatever Allah wills occurs and whatever He does not will will never occur. والخلق and then finally the creation. لأن العبد المخلوق أعماله تابعة له في مخلوق مثله. and that the slave is created and therefore all of his actions are naturally created. الله علم نكتفي بهذا المقدار تراجع الآن ثم نبدأ بعد. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to start to believe in Inshallah. Okay, so, so, Sheikh said we'll give you 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes.
uh, sit down in your groups, write down everything that the chef has mentioned in various details. We come together and we test you against each other. 15, 20 minutes.